it's Clarice and today I'm going to be doing the reaping book tag. For this, I was tagged by Read Write Dance so I will link her channel down below. I'm not actually sure who the original creator of this tag is but I will find that video and I will link it down below as well. This is basically just the Hunger Games theme tag. So some of the questions do require a reaping bowl and I don't feel like writing down all my books and putting them in a bowl just for this one tag video. So my reaping bowl is essentially just going to be my red list on Goodreads and the random number generator. So with that out of the way, let's just start with the tag. Number one, hunting in District 12. Choose a character that you would like to have with you when you're hunting beyond the boundaries of District 12. The first character that came to mind just because I'm currently in the middle of the Percy Jackson series and I actually just read the third book which features this goddess, I guess. I really can't think of a better character to choose than Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, because hunting, goddess of the hunt, I probably can't do any better than that. Number two, the reaping. Consult the reaping bowl. Draw two tributes from the bowl and choose your favorite. By some strange coincidence, I ended up getting two graphic novels for this question. And those two graphic novels are Saints, which is the second book in the Boxers and Saints duology by Jean Luen Yang, and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is the second book also in the Scott Pilgrim series by Brian Lee O'Malley. I guess this is kind of an easy question because while I do enjoy the Scott Pilgrim series, it's a really fun series, I wouldn't necessarily say that I love it. The Boxers and Saints duology, on the other hand, I really, really enjoyed. I learned a lot from it, I felt a lot from it, and it was also a really fun ride as well. So between these two, I will have to pick Saints. Number three, makeover time. Choose a book cover that really needs a makeover and one that's already perfect. I can't think of anything else and I think I already used this book for a similar question in another tag, but for the book cover that needs a makeover, I have to go with City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I'm actually semi okay with the other covers in the series, but this one, do I really need to explain? It's a half-naked giant man over a city. What is that? For a perfect book cover, I feel like there are a lot of books that I could mention for this question, but I'll try to mention a book that I haven't shared on this channel much. And that book is Zombies vs. Unicorns, which is a collection of short stories by all of these people. I'm not gonna say all of those names. And while I do like this cover with the dust jacket, it's pretty cool, I think. I still prefer it without the dust jacket because it's just, look at it, it's beautiful. It's zombies and unicorns killing each other and it's bright and colorful and gory and awesome. So I figured I might as well take this opportunity to share this amazing cover with everyone. Number four, Chariot Rides. What is a book that catches your eye from a long distance? I suppose that I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson caught my eye from a long distance just because the cover is so bright. Number five, Training. Choose a book that could do with some improvements. A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. I know a lot of people love this book, but I definitely had some problems with it. And what frustrated me the most is that I felt that this could have been so amazing because the concept was so cool. And probably because of my expectations and what I felt was the potential of this book, I just got more disappointed than I would have otherwise. And that's why I chose this book for this question, not because it's the book that I disliked the most, but because it was the book that I really, really wanted to like and was most disappointed by. Number six, training scores. Consult the Reaping Bowl. Draw five tributes and give them their training score based on how much you enjoyed reading them. With one being I hated it and 12 being I couldn't put it down. The first tribute is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which is the first book in the Harry Potter series. I really enjoyed this book, but I wouldn't necessarily say that I loved it. So I suppose out of 12, I would give it a 9. Next is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This story was great and while I would definitely recommend it, I expected to cry and it didn't make me cry, though it did make me feel sad. So I think I would give this a 9 as well. Next book is Star Wars The Jedi Path, which is a weird book to rank alongside the other books because 
Well, it is fiction, but it's not a novel. As a Star Wars fan, I enjoy this thoroughly. I would give it a 10 just because I enjoyed it so much, but it's so weird to put this beside the other books because it's nothing like them. Next is Damned by Chuck Palahniuk. There were sections of this book that I really enjoyed and dialogue and just moments that made me laugh and made me think. But overall as a book, it didn't quite blow my mind. But yeah, I still enjoyed it. Let's give it a 7. And lastly, The Death Cure, which is the third book in the Maze Runner trilogy by James Dashner. You may already know, but I didn't really like this book. It was a terrible end to the trilogy. It did not resolve anything and it was such a huge disappointment on so many levels. So I'm gonna give it a one. Wait, I'll try to be a bit nicer than that because there were parts of the book that I did enjoy. So let's give it a two. The Death Cure by James Dashner. Two. Number seven, interviews. Choose two book characters that you think would be capital favorite. I think Wayne from the Wax and Wayne Mistborn books by Brandon Sanderson would do really well with the capital just because he is charming and freaking hilarious. I know I enjoyed his dialogue and just general personality in this book, so I think he's the type of person that the capital would enjoy as well. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I also think that Clarice, not me Clarice, but Clarice from the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series by Rick Riordan would also do pretty well the capital not because she has a charming personality by any means but just because i know she's going to be one of those contestants that would play to win like she would not give up she would try as hard as she can and do whatever she needs to do to win the competition she's scary and competitive and intimidating and i think that's another type of contestant that the capital would be entertained by. Number eight, Cornucopia. Choose a fiction book that would be a valuable resource for you in the arena. I'm not sure how other people answer this question, but I'm going to answer it in much the same way that Katie did in her video. And that is by choosing a massive book that is heavy enough to possibly be a weapon. And that book for me is Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. It is just one page shy of 600 pages and it's a hardcover book and it makes use of pretty high quality, heavier, thicker paper. So I think if I whack this over someone's head, that person would fall unconscious. Number nine, canons. Pick a character from any book that you wish would die in the arena. Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter because it's Dolores Umbridge. I don't think anyone likes Dolores Umbridge. Number 10, Victor. Consult the Reaping Bowl. Draw five tributes from the bowl and decide which of the main protagonists from these books would win in the Hunger Games. I got City of Glass by Cassandra Clare, whose main protagonist is Clary. Heir of Fire from the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Moss, the main protagonist of which is Selena Sardothian. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, main character is Hazel. The Well of Ascension, which is the second book in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson, and the main character is Vin. And last Lastly, I got Murder on Baleta Drive, which is the first Tresse book by Budget Tan, and the main character is the detective Alexandra Tresse. There are some pretty good competitors, but I still think that the answer is pretty obvious. Obviously, Vin would win. She is a misborn, and not only does she have all these powers, but she's really smart in using them and has really good judgment. Also, she's probably the most kick-ass female character that I know of. Just for fun, I'm gonna rank them all because why not? Second would probably be Selena Sardothian from the Throne of Glass series because obviously she's Adderland's most notorious assassin. Next would probably be Alexandra Tresse, even though I guess in this competition she'd be alone and she wouldn't have the cambal with her. She's still a pretty street smart person and I think she'd be able to survive relatively long and would be smart enough to probably outthink a lot of the people in the arena. Next would probably be Clary. I don't think she is good enough to beat all the other people that I've mentioned, but she'd probably survive a decent amount of time. Last is Hazel from The Fault in Our Stars because 
I don't think I need to explain. Number 11, Victor's Village. Choose two fictional characters that you would love to be neighbors with in the Victor's Village. As if a weakling like me would ever be able to win the Hunger Games and actually survive to go to the Victor's Village, but let's pretend. I'm not really sure how to answer these questions, so I'll probably just choose a couple of my favorite characters personality wise and one of them would have to be Mark Watney from The Martian because he's hilarious and smart and I think conversations with him would be really interesting and really fun and I can't think of anyone else so I'll just repeat the character and repeat the personality and say that I would want to be neighbors with Wayne from again the Miss Bourne series by Brandon Sanderson and also again because Wayne is hilarious and really fun and it would be entertaining having him as a neighbor number 12 victory tour choose a book quote you would like to share in your speech to each district this is not necessarily my favorite quote but I'm too lazy to look through all of my quotes and also it seems relevant enough and that quote is from a game of thrones by george rr R. martin fear cuts deeper than swords lastly number 13 who do you tag i'm not sure who i'm tagging yet so i'll just think about it and then put their names on this video so if you're seeing your name on the screen right now then i'm tagging you and i hope you do this tag because it was pretty fun anyway thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe and also follow and friend me on my social media which i will link down below again thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in my next video bye